Hello and welcome to Peanut Butter Jenny Time, the show where I have a new guest every single week and we just have a silly little time together. Yeah. Today, my guest is He Huang. Hello everyone, my name is He Huang and I am a comedian too. Stand up. <laughs> I was going to ask you to introduce yourself, but you were, you were straight into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a comedian. You're yeah, like, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. uh, all right, so to kind of like backtrack and, you know, go into like your history a little bit. Um, so when did you start comedy? And I know there's an incident in particular when you blew up, but I want to hear like the very beginning of it as well. When did you start comedy? How did you get started? Oh, that's a, it's, it's, it's long, but it's not that long in comedy. I think I've been doing comedy for on and off seven years. Yeah. Um, actually doing just six years. I started when I was in the U.S., mm-hmm. um, yeah, as a random start. Uh, yeah. A, well, what made you want to do it? People keep telling me I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it was just like friends and family that you'd interact with, and they were like, "You should. This is for you. You should do." No, this. my family never think I'm funny. Oh. Yeah, because my dad is the funny one. Your dad is the funny one. Yeah, they always think I'm serious. They think I'm gonna be president of China. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Do you have like? Because I'm very social. Like, oh. uh, I, I, I mean, I'm the like the other kid in other people's like in other parents. They always use me as example. You know, like I'm very independent. I, oh, I see. I love to. I love my parents, and then I've been working. Uh, I did, I went to good school as well. So like, yeah. they Pre- think presidential stuff. <laughs> yeah, they think I'm on the trajectory to become next president. Wow, I know. Like it's so funny, and I, I, n- I never. Th- I I don't think they want me to like be president of China, but it's definitely my parents want me wanted me to work in the government. Wow, to some, like a l- certain level of officials like close to them. Wow, so I don't think everyone in my family thinks I'm funny. Oh, <laughs> talk about like taking a different career because most most like in my family it's like oh be a doctor or lawyer or whatever yours is even higher expectations it's like be the president of it's a so giant funny. nation I think other people think that way like they think I'm definitely gonna work in the government and um, my mom is so funny she just wants me to be a teacher so that oh. um, close to her oh how is like, teachers is she a teacher as well? She's very jealous of my auntie's profession because my auntie is a primary school teacher. So she oh. get all the... Because like whenever we have summer breaks or winter breaks, I always stay with my aunties yeah. because my parents are working. Both of mm. them, right? They don't have break. So she's really jealous of my auntie yeah, having breaks. Having bre- <laughs> you know what? A lot of the time, teachers work very hard. I will say that. Teachers yeah. work hard and they, they have to stay back and do a lot of marking. But when they get those school holidays, I'm like, oh, that looks yeah, good. Yeah, I want a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> then she was like, oh, you should do that. And you can raise your baby and stuff and oh. stay close to her, right next to her. You know? <laughs> Living in this exact same neighborhood. <laughs> oh, that's she, cute. That's, all, that's what she wanted, I think. Um, yeah. And you've done something completely different, which is move away from China to Australia. <laughs> yes. I mean... It's so interesting. I just don't know. I I think like I, I I always ask me why I cannot be my friends because like all my friends are settled down, you know, super established. Most of them pretty successful, and you know, have a kids, have a husband, um, pretty strong woman as well. But I just I just couldn't do that. I think I would rather kill myself oh, than doing gosh. that. <laughs> Kid and family. <laughs> <laughs> is this a BB. This is not getting monetized. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very extreme. No like, one's gonna. Stop I, I cannot just like to be like that. You know, I tried to talk myself into that. I was like, I'm so depressed. I feel that oh, kind wow. of lifestyle. Yeah. Why do you think that's such a depressing lifestyle? I don't know. I don't understand it. You don't understand. Yeah. Sometimes I think it's just like. <sighs> should I say in your blood? Do you know? Mm. Like, I like, I, I never feel like at ease since I was a kid. Mm. I always like moving around, like to travel. I think when I was a kid, my dream was to be a cowboy. <laughs> like, like riding horses in the yeah, outback. Yeah, just go to town to town. Yeah, and then just like kick into the bar and then drinking with other <laughs> yes. the king blokes, the bar is and then just like you know bitching about their boss after work. And yeah, it's like a very nomadic kind of lifestyle. That was a, when I was a kid. I was like you know one of my dreams to be a cowboy. To be a cowboy. Well, in a way, you kind of are because now you you know from then till now you're going like city to city. You're touring. You're kind of by yourself, yeah, and yeah. you're a comedian. So you started in um, the US. What made you come to Australia? 
I think it's just visa. It's so easy <laughs> to get the work visa here and、um, not doing because I don't want to do like U.S. is hard because I was working there. You need like sponsorship to work. Yeah, I mean it means you have to really work. Yeah. Like work, you have to. Yeah, and you're like, that's not for me. I can't. That's do that. not for me anymore. I cannot do comedy and the actual work.、Yeah. Um, so I just came here. I was like, oh, let's just give it a go. Just try if I can make it for a comedy. That's it. That's the only reason I came here. Like that's、yeah. so funny. Most people are like, I come to Australia because there's beaches and there's sunshine. And you're like, no, you guys have an extremely easy visa process. <laughs> yeah, it's friendly. I like it. I mean, I think there for me, it's definitely. Because I think it's really valuable opportunity for me, so I really take it seriously. But I'm not sure, like you know, the pros and cons of having easy visa access. But I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, yeah, let's go. So I came here, and that's pretty much it. But then, you know, things just didn't go as a plan. You know, lockdown、yeah. happened, and this yeah, and, and yeah. you were not only in like. A, a normal look. You were in Melbourne's lockdown、yeah. during the entire time, which meant no stand-up comedy.、Yeah. What what happened then? What did you do? I think I almost went insane. I was、yeah. so I have to really, really say that I'm really grateful for my ex boss, which is now my best friend here. She's one of definitely support I had during lockdown. Also, my ex boyfriend. I think without two of them, I probably won't. Uh, survive the lockdown.、I'll、probably、yeah. just go back to China straight away. But then they support me like emotionally, even like financially. Yeah. When I was out of job.、Um, but and to clarify, it's a it's a ex boyfriend that you were with at the time, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we were spending、uh, two years in lockdown. It feels、oh、like two thousand years. <laughs> really、uh, long time. Outside lockdowns, you know. Yeah. yeah. But、um, yeah. So, but I think during lockdown, Zoom comedy. I think that's the way we survived. Oh, brutal. I did a lot of Zoom gigs and、oh. also. So I took a lot of classes, writing comedy and this and that. I actually made a lot of friends、oh, uh, just、good. by Zoom. You know, like I catch up with some old friends、uh, in the US、yeah. doing comedy and stuff.、Uh, I wouldn't say I was happy about it, the whole lockdown experience, but I'm really grateful for that intense experience of my life because I I never know how because I didn't grow up with live comedy. Mm, so、true. we did not have the habit to go watch something at entertainment for in China, right? Was there what type? Do you watch any type of live entertainment in China? I think I was ch- I was chatting with my friend. I was like, my parents' entertainment at night is gambling. Oh, just play mahjong. <laughs> it's not going to the clubs. It's、yeah. just like you know, it's loud as well at the tea house, the mahjong parlor, and it's very、really、loud. Everybody's like gambling, playing cards, mahjong, smoking, drinking.、Mm-hmm. You know, all the kids playing up,、uh, mm-hmm. around them.、Mm-hmm. Um, but we never go outside. I think few occasions is like you go to like concert or some like big names come to the. Because、yeah. like, I'm from a small town,、mm. so it's rare to have some big names come to the town.、Mm. So we never have that. The whole town is out. Oh, to sounds, watch to watch that person sounds like Perth and Adelaide. <laughs> yes, but that's once in a while, you know. Yeah, it's like, true. For Perth, Adelaide, they they at least happening every year、mm. regularly. But for us, it's like once in a year. We never know. So I didn't grow up with live comedy. But when I was doing live comedy before pandemic, I still I don't think at that t- time. Now I think about it, I didn't realize the value of live comedy. Mm. Until we went into lockdowns,、so、I have to do Zoom gigs. Yes, and、yeah. and then what value did you find from it from not having live comedy? That that's like when I realized live comedy is more than like just giving out jokes.、Mm-hmm. It's it's like stand up comedy, right? I'm not I'm not talking about sketch improv or any other comedy format. I'm just like solely talking about stand up comedy. I think it's more like you're building up a community. Mm. So every time a live show, it means a different community, which you cannot achieve through like Zoom gigs. Like every audience is different. Ever like live show, you have done a lot at live show. You you understand what I mean? Like、mm. every show is different. Depends on how many audience you have, what their backgrounds are,、mm. and what's your mental health、yeah. or your readiness or how tired you are.、Mm. And each show is so different, and that's. Almost feels like you are the like architect,、mm. uh, like or designer, right?、Yeah. For design community, so it really depends on your skills to set up to make everybody in the community have some consensus of understanding about the show,、mm. and then laughing. 
Yeah, I agree. I yeah. think that's what's so special about, yeah, in particular live entertainment is that there are so many moments there that happen in the room that no one else is going to get ever and it's never going to be recreated. It just exists yes. in that vacuum of time yes. forever. Yes. And that's what's so special about live entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I realized that during COVID, I was like, oh my God, I just realized it. I was like, oh my God, it's so valuable, live comedy. <laughs> yeah. I've become so... Like appre- like appreciating all the live shows after the uh, Zoom gig. And also, that's one of the reasons I think nowadays, if you want to capture anything live comedy on the you know, camera, it's it's never as the same as you are there. Like I've been I to agree. some taping yeah. events. It's never the same. It's never the same. There's, when I watch it on the screen. There's like a buzz to it. And there's like the little bits yeah. of laughter and then the little like whispers of conversation. Where yes. they're like, oh my God, you do yes. that. You do that as well. Yeah. And it's like a, some sort of rhythm you have together. Yeah. At, at that moment, you are like a, you're like a community to get together. You're laughing mm. at the same pace. Mm-hmm. You're laughing at the same like stuff. And you have a basic understanding no out of context yeah. jokes and yeah. then you understand the a comedian who they are why they think in this way and then they give you the you know the past to laugh you know mm. it's not like someone you know nowadays people post so, so much and then the people just get angry all the time on the yeah, comments because, like oh my how dare you say this yes. how dare you there and i'm like look, look at all the comments like, have you ever watched live comedy yeah, before you're like missing so much context behind why yeah, this person's saying they just this. step outside yeah. of your fucking basement and then, <laughs> i mean it's not monetized right yeah I can't curse. Little, yeah, yeah 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 and then or did you actually step outside of the comfort zone to go to a live show to experience that kind of I don't know. It feels like you're on the drugs, like after the it, show. It, it honestly does. Yeah. Like the the way people speak, and I listen to their conversations afterwards. It's just like, oh my god, that was so much fun. Like, yeah, oh my god, I can't believe high. I just did that. There's a euphoria to it. Yes, yes, that's the word I'm looking for. I don't know. I forgot the English word. <laughs> yeah, it's the same show, right? You feel? Yeah, euphoria. it is the yeah. it is a TV show as well. Okay, so then with live comedy, you know, and experiencing that, did you ever watch live stand up before you did it? I don't know. <laughs> Neither did I, don't worry. Yeah, I went to the workshop with my pen and notes. Oh, so you went, is, is that how you started? You went yeah. to a workshop? Yeah, free oh. library programs. I was in a lot of free library programs, by so, the way. I went to, also went to how to fix a bike tire <laughs> from the same branch, okay? <laughs> Wait, so basically... Because I've never heard of this free library program before. Is that it's like in the US? US? Yeah. Oh, so they I just... got so bored. So yeah, <laughs> so, I, w- so yeah, I went to the library to borrow books to see what kind of free stuff I can get. Mm-hmm. And um, it turns out they have a lot of free workshop. But you'd be surprised. The quality, of course, is a free run. It's yeah. community events. Yeah. yeah, I went to the bike, you know, the bike tire fixing workshop. Yeah. It was actually instructed by two middle school students. <laughs> I was just sitting there looking around myself like, oh my God, I'm like in my late 20s. Like, mm, what am I doing with my life? Right? I'm just watching these people fix bike. I was wow. like, okay. <laughs> but the free library, uh, library program is it's, it's free and then it gives you a chance to ease into local comedy scene. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's then, where I started. Okay. Yeah. What's your opinion on like, you know, because I, I get a lot of people asking me this, but, you know, comedy courses and, and whether or not it's worth the money for it. What do you think of them? Uh, I think a lot of people probably don't like to take comedy classes. But I think for me, I was just looking at the way like, because uh, like it's from different culture, right? Because my mm-hmm. goal when I first started, I want to know how people who speak English as native language Mm. do comedy. Mm. So for me, it's about language classes and also the way to learn how all the comedians or the instructors, they summarize all the experience Mm. by watching other people, by doing the film for years of years, right? So Mm. I think whatever their experience can offer to me, it's a way, it's an insight Mm. of how people think comedy should be. Mm. So I took a lot of classes, I think. Yeah, and mm. mostly just American courses. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's why my joke writing is more leaning to like American style. Um, that's, I think, and also I read a lot of books too. Yeah. Like people recommend it to like comedy writing and this and mm. that. I think it's, 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 it's really depending on you, like if you want to take it. And, yeah. um, but don't, I don't know, I think like 
budget is really important because、mm. like comedy is a long game. Don't spend out spend all your money on this. It will be like insane. So like I think taking one classes like one course is good enough to start, and then it doesn't matter how many classes you take. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. That's the most important thing. You have、I、to、agree. internalize all the like tips and advice from other people. Yeah, to like, oh, actually, I understand it now when he talks about it. So if you just keep taking classes but never go to do a spot, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. When I first started, I、um, the way I got into it was just through listening to. Other people on podcasts, yeah, and then I would watch a lot of like you know like Netflix and YouTube and all、mm-hmm. of that sort of stuff. And my thinking at the time, because I was so scared to get up on stage,、mm-hmm. was oh, if I just watch, well, then I'll learn by watching, and then I'll just learn from that, and then you know through osmosis or whatever,、mm-hmm. I'll understand joke writing and structure, and then I'll get into it or whatever.、Yeah. But the thing is, it's not the same as you actually standing up on the stage、yeah. and using your performance skills and abilities and、yeah. being able to. To, like test out that jokes and seeing the live feedback from an audience as well. Like,、mm, yeah. yeah, I agree. There's no replacement for the actual like real thing. Yeah, it took me a long time. Even though I was reading and writing, and it took me a long time to realize what is a premise. Yeah, and、oh, I still、yeah. have time to figure out because it's same. It's so tricky, right? <laughs> and we've been doing、yeah. this for like years, and I'm、yeah. still just like, is this a real premise? Yeah, <laughs> this is a random little silly joke. <laughs> yeah, and I always have to test it out on the stage, like. Uh, how much you have to say to make the audience understand you,、mm. and then get the punchline right. I think that's like that's why、uh, I think that's the beauty of stand up. Yeah, it's always keep you on an edge. Like it's so true. It's like you are as good as your last gig. So you、mm. have always have to work, be present.、Um, that's fun part, and then that's a tiresome part for a lot of people who. I mean, who want, who doesn't want to do comedy anymore? I think, yeah, yeah. it's just tiresome work. Yeah, and how was your first gig on stage? I'm always curious about this. What was it like? Oh, it's my graduation workshop. Oh, it's from the library. Yes, <laughs> we did in the pub. It was so oh my fun. gosh, that's yeah, so cute. They're so supportive. All the classmates, which is like、Aww. community, they bring the friends. I bring my friends,、Aww. and an instructor pay us, which is one dollar. What? You got one dollar for the gig? <laughs> That was very exciting. <laughs> It's your first. Yeah, you're already earning money straight off the back of it. <laughs> yeah, but I I think I spent seven minutes. Dude,、nah. seven's a good amount of time. Seven minutes talking about the one joke. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> My first set was like maybe a minute and a half. <laughs> I still have the script filled. Oh I, really? Yeah, but now I only have like、uh, I think the version that's like only two two minutes. Yeah. Oh, what's it about? What's it about? It's about like、uh, greetings, you know, hi, what's up, like、oh. that. That one, but I was, I think,、um, the first gig, I was like really long, but people laughing at it. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good. That's、yeah. as comedy, you know, works. Yeah, yeah that's a good. Sign. My instructor was really surprised. Oh, that you did well. Because like every time I go to class, I was really serious. Oh, you know how, how if I don't、yeah. talk, I look at very serious Chinese <laughs> yeah, students. Yeah, you do. You're, you're like, like <laughs> with your notebook and your. <laughs> Just sits there in the first row, like from. Oh row, my gosh! Like A plus student. Yeah, like sit upright. It's like okay. Yeah. And I raise my hand. I have a question. <laughs> He told me later on. He's like, I was so scared every time you asked me questions because I have so many questions. All of them are very scary. And then like, because like he's not the expert, right? Yeah. He says I'm trying my best, but you always ask so many questions. And I, I was thinking to myself. He told me I was like, oh, you are not. Funny.、So, oh gosh. Yeah, I was like, oh, you look because I, w- I look way too serious. Yeah. But then when I did my first set, I was like, oh,、mm, interesting. You're very funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's um that's the thing I think um nowadays I think I understand the contrast between how I look. You know, like self awareness as a、yeah. comedian is really important. You have、yeah. to know what's your strength, what how people perceive you, and you can just manipulate on that. Yeah, and how、right. do you think people perceive you? Like, how do you use that in your? Oh, I mean, after my、um, public appearance on TV, I get so many comments—not comments, like <laughs> articles about me—and I was like, deadpan. Oh, I didn't know deadpan. <laughs> so you didn't know, and you just you had to see the articles for yourself、yeah. to realize. You're like, oh wow! I thought I was really excited. <laughs> I had the same thing as well when I first started. I had no idea how I came across, right?、Yeah. And then I would just have people go, "Oh, I think I've seen you before. You're like, you're really dry." And I was、mm. like, 
oh, I didn't know that. And then I started adding it to my bio. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this dry comedian, <laughs> Jenny Tian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people say that to me, dry. You are dry. And you sarcastic. Are. Yeah. I was like, ooh. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> New vocabulary. Okay. Okay. What, kind of, what kind of humor is wet? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, your comedy is so moist. <laughs> You're pouring buckets in your comedy. Because I haven't listened to your comedy, I'm just going to be wet and <laughs> moist. I was like, what? So it's, it's like English is my second language. Yeah. Right? When you say dry humor, I was like, what is dry humor? Like, like dry in Chinese means gan. Mm-hmm. Literally just like, this clothes is dry. Like Yeah, uh, it's it's a literal dry meaning dry, of having no moisture yeah, at all. No moist. <laughs> and my skin is dry. Like yeah. Then, yeah. I was like, what kind of humor is so dry? <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the articles, I actually went to research all the words. Oh, just, dry humor. <laughs> what did you, what what was your discovery? Did it explain it to you or were you just even more confused? Yeah, I think so. Like I think I understand now. I was like I was using the dictionary, so like, what is dead pen? <laughs> Yeah. Like see, like that's how much. Even though I was reading a lot of comedy, I was doing a lot of joke writing, and still I don't know. Like sometimes how I came across. Mm. Like I'm very. Sometimes I think it's a, it's a oh, it's advantage or disadvantage. I'm so self-absorbed. I don't really care, or I don't Same. really get it. <laughs> how other people think about me. Yeah, because I mean, you see yourself every day, and you're listening back to your sets all the time. So mm, it's yeah. it's hard to know. There was this. Uh, I took this acting. Um, workshop where we had a thing where we just every time someone saw like um a tape of you or you acting they had to write down um the actors that you reminded them of and I was like oh that's so interesting so you have like a whole list of people that you're similar to and uh it was uh Les Chantieri's course if anyone's interested amazing course um but yeah a lot of mine was just like Emma Stone and yeah I was like oh okay I didn't I didn't see that but now that I kind of now that you bring it up okay I can see like aspects of myself that are kind of like dry but then also randomly big at moments as well so Hmm. yeah interesting (laughs) you're like I don't see it (laughs) no I don't I don't even remember Emma Stone's (laughs) performance you know like it's it's you're like who is that I need to go and google (laughs) yeah I know Emma Stone that's the Harry Potter one right no She's the one in La La Land. Oh, <laughs> and yes. And with EZA, the redhead. Yeah. I think I know, yeah. <laughs> the American one. Yeah. You're thinking I'm of Emma I'm Watson. I'm, yeah, I might, I might know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, amazing. So, you know, we've kind of briefly mentioned your, you know, TV appearance. <laughs> so you, you went to Australia's Got Talent. Yeah. And then you were on <laughs> TV. Has it been a year now? Yes, a year, last June. Um, airing, I think aired Octo- October last year, but it was filmed end of June. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay. So, you know, h- how is that experience for you? Because you blew up, but you didn't know that you were going to. Yeah, I was just, uh, I, was just want- I just wanted to get a TV credit. Yeah. So I can get my performer wi- visa yeah. in Australia. <laughs> so many <laughs> so that's much what I wanted your, so much of your career is dictated by the visa <laughs> you're so programmatic like yeah. practical yeah, like so I was practical. like why did you do this I was like oh for money <laughs> <laughs> For a visa, you know? It's so funny because Australia's Got Talent is the exact type of TV show where everyone enters with a massive backstory where they're like, oh, you know, like, my, you know, my mum passed away and I just yeah. want to make her feel so happy. And you're literally just like, I want money. <laughs> I want a visa. I didn't get paid. So it was like literally just for TV credit and for visa. Yeah. Um, I was building up, you know, say I'm strategic. Um, mm, you are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was not in arts. I was learning. I was doing project management before comedy. So I was like, oh, let's build it up. Build it up, build it up. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And uh, yeah, I did it. And um, they invited me because they watched the Raw Comedy Finals. Oh, so and then yeah. yeah. So a lot of some people asked me not to like inch, no, advise me not to do it because mm. like, oh, you don't want you know they wanted you to cry, you know mm. they wanted you to do like this emotional. They don't really appreciate stand up comic. But then I was debating, should I go for it or not? And then I was like, oh my God, yeah, for the visa. So I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, um, uh, you know, I'm just, I was like, I told myself that I'm not going to give them what they want. I, I'm not going to cry, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to be a quiet, 
happy leftover woman on a stage.、Um, mm. That's it. That's what I try to achieve. I said we did it. It took us two days, and、um, yeah. And then they said I will move to semifinal, but、um, I didn't. Mm. So don't believe whatever TV producer told you. <laughs> I think, yeah, I really thought I'm gonna be in the semifinal.、Mm. So like, I gave them different script actually.、Mm. If I knew I would not be in the same, I'm probably gonna do another set. Oh, a different set for your. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did you save your better material for the semifinal? Yeah, it's more Australian、oh. materials.、But、I'm so glad I didn't went into a semifinal because I don't think those material now look that good. Because <laughs> yeah, this the set that's online is. International, like people, everyone gets the jokes. Yeah, There's like the、yeah. barrier of entry is not, you know, based on your yeah, background or yeah. anything. It's because those jokes, like I grant them, like for years. Of course, people get it. I think.、Mm. Now I think about it. I didn't know back then. Yeah, and what about the reception of it? Because you kind of blew up off the、yeah. back of the clips being posted online. How did you respond to that? Oh,、uh, I came back from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so you were on a holiday. Yeah, I、What、came back from、that? Thailand, and I was dealing with my breakup. Oh, that, which no. like,、um, you know, it took me a long time because it's a it's a hard breakup. Yeah, and、um, I was just in the process of doing that.、It、was very stressful, depressing time, and then they aired the the AGT stuff when my ex was. In India, yeah.、Mm. So, but he came back right like four days after the the blow up stuff. So he kept me,、uh, he kept me company going through that time. He was very wise. So I was like, how come you're not in art man management industry? <laughs> be an agent, please. <laughs> he was so wise. He was like, oh, if you wanted to be a big person, you would have a lot of trolls.、Mm. Like I was like, don't reply to them.、Mm. That's the only thing he said to me. Yeah, because you got a lot of. You know, attention immediately f- from people that loved you, but also people that you know. Yeah, I think love was first, and then hate was second.、Mm. I think it, it come it was a very intense, very fast period of time because it was viral.、Mm. So and、uh, so it came really fast.、Mm. First, the, like compliments, and then second, because the, I rem- I I remember like when it was aired on telly,、mm-hmm. so I got like a couple of hundred followers on Instagram. And then just become as like days goes by, become one more and more and more, and、uh, and then the trolls came because I I got like some people trolling,、uh, just saying really bad nasty stuff on my Instagram, and that's where I thought, oh, what's happening right now? Because I don't have other social media presence,、mm. and so I got to know that. But it was very intense period of time because it goes like this, and I was like, what's going on?、Mm. Right. So I was really happy. I was really lucky actually to have him to. Tell me like calm down like like don't you have to be like if you wanted to be like big or famous or like especially for stand up there's definitely some so many people just gonna troll you on the、mm. internet not because you're bad because they are really bad people、mm. or they have really bad life、mm. so I think he just、uh, talking to me and going through that it was really helpful、oh, and then、good. yeah so I was like. Talking to you, you help me a lot too. Like you share、oh, with、I'm、me、glad. your trolling experience.、Yeah. I was telling, I was talking to other comedians because I've never experienced this before. Yeah. Because I never had like、uh, what is called, inf- I'm not like you know build it up like you guys. You you build it up your fan base and、mm. you post the videos regularly. So I have never done that before. So it was a big learning curve for me. But once I go through that, I'm like. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And now you're equipped for yeah, and you're stronger. Yeah. And it, because like it was so funny because like it went viral in China, right? Like most in China, it's like a mixed com- compliment,、uh, mixed comments. Like I think if you watch from YouTube, most of it's just a compliment or、mm. like I like you.、Mm. But in China, it's like mixed. Most、mm. a lot of the comments are very hateful and disgusting,、mm. and then so I get a lot of like messages from my friends as well, like all over the world. They、mm. they they send me like screenshot of from different platform they saw me, and I'm like, oh my god, fuck! There's a lot of platform、yeah. out there, and、uh, most of them not posted by me, right? So put someone、mm. else, you know, get the what it's called, new、uh, liang, like what it's called. Like you know, the, the the following, they just like get ride the wave with this like whole virus stuff. So 
I was like, oh my god. First of all, I was really depressed, and then after that, I was like, oh wow. Actually, I still have a lot of followers. Mm. Like my ex told me, like you have to focus on what who loves you. Yeah. So when I saw those followers, and I was like, oh my god, they gave me so much strength. Like oh, thank you guys. That's so nice. Um, I was like, and then I just look at all the comments, the hateful comments. I was like, oh my god, those people are so nasty. And also, I was actually very conservative in terms of like approach to comedy, talking about. China、mm. or like stuff related to that,、mm. but especially guys like、mm. men. And I was like,、mm, I'm gonna go hard on you guys. Yeah, like I being, I was being nice, you know. Like I was not even talking about other people. I was talking about myself as object,、yeah, exactly as a point of view to 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 deliver the joke, right?、Mm. And but then they're like, I remember my friend too. He. He was like, I thought he, I never thought he was like this person. My same message is, oh, I like the structure, like the delivery, but you just don't talk about your nationality and then your gender. I was like, what the fuck else I'm gonna talk about? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a massive aspect of your identity. Yeah. Why do you think people have issues with you talking about those topics? Ah,、uh, I think it's like、um, their own problems first, because like、mm. never other comedians have to explain why they talk this joke. You know,、it's、only、so、minority、true. women. It's so true.、Oh、Only minority、yes. women have to tell them again, gonna why. And then people ask you, "Oh, do you think you reinforce your stereotypes? Yes, racism and this and that." I'm like, I never thought about that, you know. And I just talk about myself, my perspective, and then it's not a hacky premise as well. So I was like, I never thought about reinforced stereotypes because, like, I never experienced that because I didn't、mm. grow up. You're from China, like.、Yeah. <laughs> what do people expect you to talk about? It's like your experiences growing up. Of course, you're going to be talking about being Chinese, and yeah, and it was combating、China. racism.、Right? Yeah, like, a lot of stuff actually didn't happen to me. Happened to other people I know.、Mm. And、uh, whenever I have something bad happen to me in real life, I always stand up for myself. Right?、So、I didn't know how it feels like if you're the weak. Side of the you know the society as a minority, so I never thought about that. Actually, when people ask me, I think only minority women get asked that question. Yeah, so I have to. We、we'll、have to explain ourselves all the time. All the time, constantly. Why do you do the joke? You、it's, know, do you feel bad about it? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> no, it's just literally like this is what you, right what you know right, and this is what I know. Yeah, and then I've asked people ask me, oh, why do you talk about like China? Like,、uh, you being Chinese, that's all. all <laughs> like, why is that part of your routine? I'm like, what's wrong with talking? Like, yeah, what is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with me talking me me, me being China? Like, I'm from China, you know. Exactly.、I'm、Chinese, and then also I'm a woman. Yeah, exactly. I have my desire. I'm a human, you know. I'm,、yeah. uh, what else we're gonna talk about? Like. Like all the other white comedians talk about rape joke, yeah,、uh, exactly. What yeah, yeah, abortion jokes, Jesus joke, gun jokes. Yeah, which is way more controversial and into political territory than you doing jokes about being a leftover woman. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> that's the thing、jokes. I care. Like, write something in comedy writing. Well, it's like write something frustrate you, like、mm. make you feel angry, and it's authentic. Come from. My experience, right? Like, why not? I'm talking about like, why do you, like, who are you to tell me what to tell? What? Like, that's the thing I don't get from people who like trolls on other people's like comments and video、mm. clips. If you don't like comedy, you know, you're a adult. You can always have the choice to turn it off. Exactly,、just、you can say nothing. Yeah. yeah, you can scroll. It's so easy to just scroll. Yeah,、like. and it's so much effort for、mm. someone to leave a comment. It like, is. I do not leave comments. Normally. Yeah, when do it's, it's so like, much effort. Yeah, I barely do、type. it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to type. You have to you have move to your thumb. You have to move your thumb. I was like, re-read it. Yeah, <laughs> make sure you haven't made、Edit. typos. Sometimes I、like, feel like typos. <laughs> Grandma, like me, second language English, second language is oh, should I post it? You know, like it's a lot of effort. You just like scroll away, and the comedy and people are like nowadays to take comedy so serious. I don't、oh、understand why. Like it's a joke. Yeah, like, our job as a comedian is to entertain. Yeah, it's not to educate. Yeah, people are just taking it so seriously. I I don't think like my principle or my value is still like I don't think we should put comedians on the pedestal. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, we're entertainment. We're, we're entertainers. entertainers. You should not be looking to us、yeah. for your worldviews and yes, philosophy. Exactly. Go to proper racism, combating、yeah. <laughs> racism stereotypes.、Yeah. Like I think what those. Actually, changes from your participation in your local life, like your community, day to day life. Did you stand up for yourself when you have like racism happen to you? It's not from comedy. I think like if you don't like comedy, just walk away. Don't watch it. You don't have to be so nasty about it. Yeah, hundred、yeah. percent. I there's like a statistic online that's like.、Um, 
women get targeted online like way more than guys but then also people of color get targeted way more online yeah, we combine and we're together. both we're with the venn diagram of it it's just you everything. the heart which means we're gonna be more famous <laughs> hopefully please troll me i love the viewership <laughs> give us comments yes, give us please engagement give a comment please um yes uh that will make my income you know skyrocketing <laughs> so i can monetize this i podcast. can monetize it <laughs> It's so fun. Yeah, it's so true. Like on my stuff, it's like, especially when you're doing comedy, people feel the need to go not funny or whatever it is. They don't even go to comedy that much. And they don't watch live comedy. It's like if you actually, if you stood on stage and tried this exact same thing, let's see how funny you are. Yeah, also, I don't want them to do that. I mean, it's going to be a really shit gig I will watch. I will, like, it make me suffer, right? Yeah, uh, and I don't want to watch that either. You don't need that in yeah. your life. I just, like, just go watch comedy if you really think um, the narrative is something you want to change. I think comedy changed by audience participation as well. Mm. If we have more Asian comedy. Because a lot of the stuff I talk about, actually, Asian love the most is mm. the most racist ones. <laughs> whenever it's so true. yeah whenever i have more asians in my crowd they love the racist shit i talk about on the stage and then the white people is on the other hand they don't feel comfortable laughing so i actually tone it down for white people yeah so if you want to say more racist stuff come to my live show <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. uh, speaking of like you know the, the comedy community and everything as well and the stand-up scene i feel like you're one of the people that i know that are the most actively generous within the comedy community in that like you did the Asian, uh, you produced the Asian comedy showcase and you booked so many different acts there, including me for spots. Um, you, you know, participate in like different workshops and you help facilitate, like um, you offered to, you, you produced um, or directed two of your friends shows that, you know, you think are really promising and up and coming. You're like actively doing so much to like give back to the community. Um, how did you kind of figure out your role within that and that you decided that you wanted to do that? Uh, I think it's, it's, I think it started with the US mm. culture. I think they are a competitive bunch of people, but mm. they have, there's like a camaraderie among US comics. So they would do stuff together. And that's like when I used to, you know, when I first started in the US, I would ask people to sign up for me when I'm at another gig. Oh, so it's like, it was, yeah, it's done like, that too. <laughs> yeah, it's like sign up for me, we'll do this and that, we we'll do three gigs a night and yeah. that stuff. And also you go to workshop and the writing group uh, groups and they will like give you all the different kind of perspective, help you to understand your joke and mm. who you are as a comedian on the stage. And I think, um, yeah and also i had i had a lot of issues when i first started like yeah i don't know this i didn't know that maybe i say something i shouldn't maybe mm. i did something i shouldn't maybe i slept with someone i shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i wish someone could be like you know more helpful like mentoring me or just give me some advice mm. um like you know n- neutral advice right now it is I also get some advice when I started. Like, you should do this, you should do that, right? Mm. It's like uh, when there are older comics to tell you what comedy should be. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so also those can be wrong or right. I think I, I was, I think I'm lucky in the sense that I did not uh, start comedy at early age. So mm. I started late. When did you, what age did you start comedy? Um, 27, I think, 27 or 26. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wish I started later, yeah. Yeah, so I think I had a lot of like a real world life experience. Mm, you have to talk about. Yeah, yeah, more like a neutral perspective of comedy. Mm. I think it's more like uh, take this with some strategy, like mm. less of, you know, chaotic. I think when I approach comedy that way, and I was like, oh, I, I wish someone who can give me some guidance, you know, mm. but I didn't have, but I did it. I figure it out myself by reading and watching and listening to all the podcasts because nowadays it's really easy to get so many information everywhere mm, it is yeah, yeah podcasts youtube so many teachers and zoom gigs private coaching mm. a lot of books a lot of like writing workshops and i think i benefit from that so i think like if someone feel the same way like lost and stuff i i would love to help if i can right mm. and also um it's, it's so funny because I wanted to because especially nowadays I found like a lot of women and the LGBT like minority groups mm. they want to try comedy but then sometimes they feel like a little bit intimidated by the process yeah and a lot of people tell them what to do what not to do like, especially mm. women mm. 
And because uh, for me, I have a big dick energy. You do so, massive dick energy. <laughs> yeah, I, it's because come from the real life work experience. Because I was like, oh, I, I'm really sure who I am as a person. So yeah, I don't really get influenced a lot. Yeah, other than good dick. Yeah, um, <laughs> other than for good dick. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't get influenced a lot by other people's like uh, prejudice. Mm. But some women, I think, in comedy scene, are really easy to be influenced. So I will help out if I can, because I, I, you know, I get told so many things when I first started. So I was, oh, if I can share that, comedy is a journey. You don't need to listen to other people. Mm. You should or should not to do it, but you need to figure out yourself as a journey, right? So that's what I try to. Offer, you know. Yeah, and you do. You give the best advice. Yeah, on that. I started. I think I started a bit too young. I started when I was twenty-one, and I, I had nothing. Twenty-one. Wow. I know. I had nothing to say. I really. I just was on stage talking about. I just finished uni, and I'm like, well, that's unrelatable to people. What the hell? What am I going to talk about? Arranging my university time. But that's funny too. I was. I watch a lot of young people do comedy and funny as well. You can definitely do it funny, but I had a. It was. I didn't know myself first, and I still don't. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. figuring it, out yourself. Yeah, like you said, like you know, you're going to be seven years into it, and it's it for whenever I tell people like oh yeah like I'm six years into comedy now they're like wow that's a really long time and I'm like no it's not yeah <laughs> no, it's, it's like not. a baby I'm still trying to work all yes, of this out like I'm yeah. every time I feel like you know I've done a show or whatever I'm still just like okay I feel like I've only just got a grasp on how I want to present myself in yeah, comedy true. and then the next year I change that again so yeah, yeah me too I was um that's the thing about comedy is, is, is you're always involving as a person mm. as a persona on the stage as well I think one of the things I like about stand-up is that you have to be present yeah yeah so, and then people know when you're not people yeah. know when you're drifting off yeah they can the feel audience it. know right away if yeah. you are not present yeah and that's such a valuable trait I don't have <laughs> So really? I, you don't think you're present? I no, I force myself to be present. Okay. So that's a good thing I love about comedy. You know, be present, enjoying living the moment, mm. which I didn't have. But now I grad, and you know, gradually, gradually, I start to understand it. Cause like, you have to be at that moment to you know to to make the flow, and then at that moment, it means like every day you're involving as a person, as a comedian. Which is so fun, you know? It's really yeah. fun to, to have that recorded. <laughs> <laughs> recorded? Is this a plug for your for Yeah, your I have my first time <laughs> recorded too. It was so funny. Yeah, yeah my friends recorded too. Do you ever watch back? I think maybe during COVID, I watched it back. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, and now like moving from China to Australia, obviously very, very different cultures. What do you think are the biggest differences you found or things that surprised you about Australia? <sighs> English first. In the English language. Yes, I didn't understand Aussie English when I first landed. Like it the, took me a long time. Like our, our, our slang or our accents? Accent. And oh. also slang too. Oh, so everything. <laughs> I was like, when I was in Melbourne, I tried to ask to, to get a cab to the hostel I booked. Yeah. And uh, I think it took that. Uh, I was asking the, the guy at the money exchange place. He he just explained to me many many times and also i'm surprised how many asians you have here <laughs> i'm like wow because I, I didn't know that uh, all the aussie i know before i came here are white oh because yeah there is the the image of like the beachy and yeah, surfing and applause, yeah, yeah yeah even i have one classmate or two classmates for grad school they're from australia they're all white yeah, so like I didn't know there are so many Aussie uh, Asians here, and uh, and it's great because like now I can enjoy a lot of food, like <laughs> yeah, authentic food. Yeah, here. we have really good food here. Yeah, and then so and also it's surprising to know every city just so far away from each other. Yeah, it's a big country. There's so much land. Yeah, and yeah. it's so less population, like yes. so few people here, and um, but it's good to know like you guys still you know hanging your clothes outside to dry that's for china like oh, we do that too okay. but not in the u.s u.s is like dry machine like you know oh, dry machine only yeah and so you usually the uh what is that hot water balloon whatever oh that's called like um 
Oh yeah, like a hot water bottle. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to warm up. You have that to I <laughs> Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we had that in China. It's like a very old-fashioned way of uh, heating up, you know, for, you, warmer, like warmer, right? I have never seen I haven't seen that for a long time. So well, I was like so surprised when I saw it at the like chemist warehouse. <laughs> so is hot water bottles considered like old school? Yeah, very old-fashioned. Oh. Now that's like people use electricity warmer. Like, you know, like you have some USB charge and then you can just charge something. We we'll call it like Nuan Bao Bao. It's like a warm baby. It's because oh, it's so tiny. You just yeah. like put it in your hand and then it's so warm. Yeah, and you put it on your tummy too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I, I was really it. surprised to see that here. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that that was a thing. I want it now. One thing really upsetting about Australia is like some of the all, like the, the bathroom. Mm hmm. They have hot water and cold water. I was like, what the oh, point? Yeah, that I'm annoying. like, the hot water is like burning. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. And then and the cold water is so cold. I was like, fuck. I was like brushing my teeth. I was like, oh my God, so cold. And then just like, they never merge them together. Yeah. Oh yeah. When the taps merge together, it's the best. But yeah, there are a lot of things and that are separate. And I was like, why? And then the, the warm water, it's hot. It's like really hot. It's burning hot. You cannot drink it. No. I don't know. What's like? What's the point? And then you don't have this like stopper, you know, like put on oh, the, yeah, the opening. Oh yeah, the Yeah. So you can just actually mix them up to warm oh, water. Yeah. No, it's no. It's just like Ronnie said. Like, every time, sometimes you know, at some of the hotel or hostel or some you know places, and yeah. I have to splash the water. <laughs> It's like, go together, go together. Make it warm, not too cold, not too hot. The sinks are also really small as well. Yeah. So you're like cramming your hands. I was like, <laughs> it feels like a cold food. I was like, oh my God, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Avatar the way of the water. <laughs> it was such a struggle every day. If I lived in kind of a household, it was such a struggle. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was so funny too. That is, ind- I'm glad that our taps are getting better now. Um. <laughs> yeah, I just want to know who designed it. Why? <laughs> Why would must you be do evil, that? like evil-minded person. Just like I want people to suffer, <laughs> and then people just accept it. And I'm like, what? Like you don't ask your person like this is not reasonable. You know? <laughs> why? 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 I, I don't. I, I'm trying to understand it, but I don't think I understand it. I just say it every. I think it's also because I don't know. Like growing up with like school and everything, you're just so used to the cold water all the mm-hmm. time. Like yeah. you don't even have a hot water tap a lot of the time like really? i feel like hot water is it's definitely like a thing that's appreciated more in like china and stuff yeah but here it's like cold water is like the norm we drink cold water you wash your hands with cold water in schools all the taps are cold water so we're just like yeah it's normal so you just never use that hot water tap oh interesting okay yeah okay so we've been we've been talking about you've briefly mentioned dick and how much you love dick <laughs> and like now digmatized digmatized <laughs> Dictate me. <laughs> Dude, you need to sell merch with that on it. <laughs> Dictation. <laughs> I'm like the dictator. Um, yes. So you, because um, I've lived with you, you have, every, every time you're touring it, you have dick in every city. Like you have a system of dick. <laughs> system you have of a dick. supply of dick that's always there for you. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, true. So mm. how, how have you said that? Are you just on Tinder? <laughs> No, I'm not on Tinder anymore. Tinder is disgusting. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I know I'm not going to get sponsorship by Tinder, but it is. Uh, it's. A, I don't know. I think when I was younger, it's fine. Mm. Now I'm getting older. I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of effort. Tinder. Yeah, it's a lot of effort. So then how are you meeting your people? Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's still Tinder? I just stopped it. I just stopped it. Okay, okay you've only yeah. recently just stopped yeah, the reason. Yeah, because I'm seeing a guy, so I'm like, okay, Oh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Not committed. Yeah. Not committed. You're still open to other. Still open, you know. Yeah. Like, having fun. Like, nowadays, okay, I'm depressed too. Mm. Uh, uh, not being married, because, like, <laughs> I'm going home soon. So, it's a lot yeah. of questions going to throw to my face. Oh. Like, oh, wow, what are you doing with your life? You're not yeah. married. Yeah. But um, my auntie says, like, you just enjoy your life. Nowadays, it's hard. Like, women, we have work, too. Like, I support myself. Guys have support. Like, what's the point of, you know, be together if you cannot enjoy each other sexually and also spiritually? So I don't want to settle down for a lot of stuff, but I want to enjoy dicks. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. 
it's yeah. also like it's just a nice feeling like i think you were telling me so when cool. i was in melbourne you're just like just do it just feel sexy and i'm like yeah true it is it's rest hard to meet up your partner you're not partner you date and then feel cute for feel like beautiful by yourself it's really good it's like very boost for confidence yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> digmatize <laughs> absolutely love it okay um so you know we touched on this earlier with agt but um we're now up to the section in my podcast called clapbacks and clapbacks oh. is where we actually take the specific comments that are you know said to us and we clap back against them yeah so have you got any comments that you'd like to share of the mean wow, things so said? many so many bad comments oh one of the comments from china uh, i think it's a woman left this comment she was like, uh, for my AGD set, right? She was like, oh my God, she has a really bad sense of fashion. What she's what wearing. The hell? <laughs> you cannot, you know, put your tops inside uh, up and then your your lower belly just like protruding. That's bad. She looks like a water bucket. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's clearly spent a really long time analyzing this. It's like, this is about the jokes. <laughs> What are yeah, you doing? that's the kind of woman I would never be friends with. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably have her sad life. But anyway, I was like, mom, is you? <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell me directly. You don't have to leave a comment. <laughs> I already know. I'm working on the outfits, yeah. mom. <laughs> I got it. You know, you should. You don't need to talk to me about it. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot of comments like that, like yeah. superficial about my appearance, like like so silly same with me yeah yeah like you're fat you you your face look big i was like i know i've been <laughs> living with myself for 30 four years <laughs> i know how my face look like right like i, I don't need to yeah i don't need you to tell me how i look like yeah, yeah. if i look like angela baby or some other gorgeous emma stone <laughs> I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing comedy. <laughs> yes, I would be not doing comedy. I mean, not saying com- comedian not pretty, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh my God, what she's wearing. And I was like, oh, I don't like her. You know, she shouldn't show her this and that. And the makeup is bad and the stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, sure. So you know, I didn't know I was going to be that famous, you know, just one video. I yeah. could have hired a professional makeup. You just didn't get paid at all for this. I didn't make up myself. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, if I know I'm going to go viral, I'm going to just hire a professional on Groupon. <laughs> on Groupon. <laughs> Even when it's about to get millions and millions of views, you're like, no, no I still, I'm out for a discount. They have Groupon. those like really awesome deals sometimes. Um, if you got like from cashback. <laughs> Sometimes they have a promotion like 30% off. Oh my god. Sometimes gosh. 50% off oh, for from locals. Like oh. if you do local activities or like beauty stuff. Yeah. So if you hire that, you can do your hair down by local. <laughs> <laughs> Solo. And you get $10 back from. <laughs> it. You only like spend like $50, you get like $5 <laughs> back. Yeah, if I knew I'm gonna be like that viral, I will hire a group on hair artist, okay, and also makeup artist. <laughs> do the whole set. That's yeah. a good. I'm gonna do that for my next thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing. I'm gonna do that too. I already booked one. <laughs> oh, you already booked it. <laughs> this time I didn't use the group on, you know, because I already used it. It's only for new customer. Oh, so you had to find a new salon. <laughs> no, I didn't find a new salon because I really liked. It. I think she's the only one who provide like a protein treatment for her hair. Oh, okay. Yes, I have to pay the full price. Oh, no. I'm going to cry for the whole week. <laughs> it's a tragedy. No <laughs> discounts. <laughs> discounts? <laughs> yeah, I think what's interesting about your community and, like, the negative comments that you get is that they're from China, mm. whereas the negative comments that I get are from Australians. Like, Yeah, what kind of comments? Because I – yeah, I don't know what kind of people – what kind of because you don't see any controversial stuff i don't say anything controversial at all really like but just other stuff like um i did one about um cole's hot cross buns like a sponsored oh yeah i saw that video it was fun (laughs) gosh anyway and then the you know the comments are just like you know not funny i got one that was like when asians think they're funny and it's like yeah i am (laughs) thank you very much um i got another one um where i i I don't know i do like videos about the australian states and whatnot um and then someone was like how come a chinese knows so much about australia 
It's like there's so many of us here. <laughs> How do you not know this at this point? Yeah, you kind of talk sense out of ignorant people. That's what yeah. I learned. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So most of my comments are like that, and sometimes about my appearance as well. Like, um, you know, the, the people tell me the plastic surgery I should get for myself. People are like, your nose is like you have a deviated septum, so you should get this type of plastic surgery. Which I'm like, I didn't even know what that was. I had to like Google it, and then I was like, oh, I didn't know your nose could be like this. <laughs> And then they're like, brush your teeth um, because genetically I just have really bad teeth and I eat a lot of sugar. Um, So, yeah, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know. I I wasn't looking at my teeth in my videos. So it's just like all these. You should brush your teeth as a video. (laughs) (laughs) Show them how Asian brush their teeth. I brush it for You can ask for sponsorship as well. Yeah, true. (laughs) Colgate. From the (laughs) Japanese brand. I love their brand. Yeah. (laughs) Like there's a Chinese phrase idiom to talk that like that is like ji tong ya jiang is basically what you're talking about and mm. their comments it feels like chicken talking to a duck oh you're never gonna you know oh you're never gonna make the point eye. yeah mm. so it's like they are the chicken you are the duck you are all poultry <laughs> yeah both delicious <laughs> yum but duck is fatter than chickens i prefer chicken to lose weight so oh. that I don't look like a water bucket. <laughs> I'm gonna look like a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> or skyrockets. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. But I think like you, you can never win the argument with the trolls. Yeah, it's not worth the effort, not worth the energy. Yeah, yeah you can but I think it's sometimes it's amusing to look at those stuff. It's just like, like self contradictory. Yeah. Like I have a comment. So one of them is like, oh, why is that your jokes must come at the expense of Asian people? You know, some people actually are actually happy to be Asian and proud of their culture and heritage, right? Not all of us are brainwashed by Western media like yourself. Please just go marry a white person and live a quiet life. And his Instagram account is, uh, yeah, I love Nan- Nando's and the Cisco. <laughs> They're not Asian, no. Yeah, yeah. and I'm much. like, this it's just a common. How are you gonna talk sense out of those people? You know, they have yeah. like, they probably have bad experience their own mm, life. You know, and they're projecting it onto you. 100%. Yeah, they're projecting um, them. I'm like, I never say I'm not proud. Like, if I'm not proud of my culture, I would not. I'm not gonna talk about it at all. Exactly. If I'm not proud of who I am, I'm not gonna talk about it at all. That's mm. the thing. That's a normal reaction people would do. Mm. If you're not proud, you don't talk about it. Mm. I think exactly because you're proud and confident about who you are, then you can talk about it, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> I was like, go marry a white person. <laughs> yeah. I like brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your type is not that at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not quiet at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, but none of those uh, guys actually gave me, you know, cosmetic suggestion. Like they did to you. <laughs> I think I need it. I think I, I, I was what? like, no, you don't. I was thinking about to make my face like chiseled here, oh. like small, like, you know how all of oval face? Oh yeah, not yeah. because of the trolling. Okay, it's because of my insecurity about myself. Oh, of because of my parents been trolling me for the oh. whole life. So I think that I was like, oh, maybe I should get like the face. Like your face is like a, the beauty standard. By the way, if trolls like her face is a beauty standard of Asian beauty. Like you have yeah, to yeah, leave those comments, face. please. <laughs> small face, and I was like, I want to have those like small face. Oh, but you don't. I mean, you don't need that. But I mean, you know, obviously your face up to you, what you do yeah, with it. But yeah. I think I think you're perfect the way you are. <laughs> That's my parents now tell me. I think. I don't know. I think one of the things growing up in an Asian house is like you have really insecure beauty standards about yourself. 100%. Yeah, not because you're trolls, it's because the parents and then the environment. Yeah, you're constantly compared yeah. to other people. Yeah, you're... it's a lot of uh, like all the Asian too, right? They look yeah. so pretty. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. they compare themselves all the time. Oh, you're, I mean, it's like because we're our, our parents are from the same culture. Mm. So it's like all those learned parenting habits had, you know, are still passed down to us. So yeah, you get compared, you very few positive affirmations and everything's just critical of how you are and how you look and your weight is usually like the first thing that people comment on yeah, when they true. see you. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a lot of the same. So, yeah. you know, insecurity everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think compared to you, I'm lucky it's because I grew up in that kind of environment. Everybody's like that. So I don't feel different. Mm. But when you jump out of the circle, it's like, oh, wow, it's really toxic. It's like very self-harming kind of parenting stuff. 
Yes, yes. And it's because, you know, our parents grew up from a lot of trauma. And just, I know, you know I can tell. To, they're yeah. just trying to do the best for us. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap things up now. I've got um, questions that I ask at the end of um, every podcast episode. The first one is, do you go to therapy? No, I don't. Okay. But I'm thinking about going in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the question for the people who don't go to therapy. What do you think is the greatest lesson that you've learned from like a mentor or a teacher? And my dad says, like, life is not fair. That's it. Mm, Nobody, uh, like, equality, it's false. Mm. Yeah, very dark. He that's told me so when sad. I was in middle school. Oh, man, that's so sad. And what does that mean for you now? It means, like, um, just appreciate whatever you have, you know? Like, it's you, I have a choice, you know? Like, I don't need to just stand up. A lot of people don't have the choice. Mm. You know, I doing stand up is because I want to achieve of myself, like you know. But a lot of people are struggling just to survive on mm. you know, on daily basis. So I think like it's not fair, but I think realize that just gave me a lot of gratitude mm. for my experience for life. Last little thing. Plugs. Um do you have anything that's coming up? What's your social media if people want to come and find you? Yes, if you want to troll me, you have to follow me first. <laughs> so my comments only for my followers. Um, I, I'm more, I'm very active on Instagram, mm-hmm. but all the social media I have it, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, Instagram is He Huang Comedy. Mm-hmm. That's and it. But I'm mostly just active on Instagram. Other platform, I use it once in a while. I'm not really, you know, depending on social media to be who I am and also I have a trial show upcoming in Sydney yay it's in I think it's December 14th amazing yeah trial show for my new show like work in progress uh, stuff I'm gonna talk about I think most just gonna be traveling and cultural stories love it and also a little bit dick so <laughs> has to <laughs> be involved you Always have to have has, dick <laughs> has to be involved yes essential essential okay the very last question um, how do you like your peanut butter smooth or crunchy I love crunchy. I love big, 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 thick. You like nuts. nuts. <laughs> I love nuts. You love them nuts. <laughs> big nuts. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Her Huang. It was so nice to just chat comedy. Um, yeah, yeah, me too. I love it. Yeah. I love to be like nerdy about comedy. Thank yeah. you for having yeah. me. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Like, to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to me. Okay, and subscribe to Her Huang. Okay. Rate us. Give us five Give stars. me more positive affirmation. <laughs> Tell me I'm the most gorgeous woman. <laughs> so I can show my mom. Mom, look what people say about me. I made it. She's like, I don't believe it. <laughs>